Um, welcome back to Aro Knits and Pearls. I am Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls. You can find my social media and Ravelry info down below. But um, I am so happy to see you guys again. First, I want to apologize for not filming a video last week. I I didn't tell you guys I was going to be absent last week because um, a little bit of personal talk before the yarn and knitting talk. Um, you guys know my mom passed uh, December of last year really unexpectedly. And um, last week was my brother's 30th birthday and um, he's autistic. So I really, really wanted to be there for him to cook his favorite foods and um, you know celebrate his 30th birthday with him because I know that's what my mom would want me to do. So um, that's why I was gone. I was cooking like six hours a day minimum and still doing my job, uh, which lets me work remotely. So that was nice, but um, anyway, I'm back now and thank you guys for being patient with me and I'm so excited to show you guys more yarn stuff. Like I didn't get a lot of knitting done because I was, you know, cooking and working and I didn't have any time to myself, but I I have come back with more creative juices than ever and I'm just I'm ready to share with you guys. So first, I did have a little time, well, so my my family my family lives in the middle of nowhere in Oklahoma, pretty much along the border of Oklahoma and Arkansas. Um, if you know Fort Smith, Arkansas, they're very close to that. So to go to the Korean grocery store, it's, an, it's a four hour drive to Dallas, which is um, DFW has a lot of Korean grocery stores and stuff that um, my dad and my brother need. So I drove down there the day after I flew in from Salt Lake. So I drove down to Dallas and on the way, as a little treat to myself, I stopped by um, the McKinney Knittery in McKinney, Texas. So downtown McKinney is super cute. It has like old brick buildings. It looks like a town square from back in the day and it's super cute. There are lots of really cute murals. murals. And one of the things I got, well, the only thing I got, I was really good on my trip this time because I didn't have any money. Um, I got Magpie Swanky Sock, and this is a color called Tupelo, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Tupelo Honey, and it's definitely not my normal color palette. Generally, I shy away from yellows and orange and, you know, golds because they kind of run the risk of making me look jaundiced, but um, I had applied to uh, Jacqueline Sislex, Sislek? Um, I applied to her test knit for the Bessie crop and I hadn't gotten in yet. She was going to let us know later that day whether we were in or not. So in my magical thinking, I was like, I am going to get the yarn for it. And that, you know, positive energy is going to make it happen. And I did get in it, by the way. I'm in that test knit. I just, I, I'm going to cast on today. I just wanted to show you guys it um, in the skein because it's so pretty. And um, these are the only two left and of this colorway. And I thought this would be different enough that it would stand out in my, you know, pile of knits. So, and I don't think it makes me look jaundiced. Obviously the color, the lip color doesn't go do it any favors right now, but I'm pretty excited. Plus this color is a really great late summer autumn color. So I'll be able to wear it, you know, throughout to the season and a half. Uh, and I'm really excited to be on that test. So that's what I got at McKinney Knittery. McKinney Knittery is a great yarn store, by the way. Lots of indie yarn, um, lots of choices. I highly recommend going. Um, something else I want to mention about McKinney Knittery is that I met my first um, viewer in person. Uh, so I have a couple friends that watch this and like Megan of Kinchi and Co. And I see her, so that's fine, whatever. But I knew her before this podcast. Um, so... I was at McKinney Knittery and I was talking to one of the employees. One of the employees approached me while I was shopping and she was like, I'm sorry to be weird, but are you in the Bits and Bobbles test knit? I wasn't wearing this, by the way. And I was like, yes, I am. Because she had seen the picture I shared in the Slack that we have for the test knit. By the way, um, I'll talk about this later. I'll talk about this later. And uh, she and I were just vibing. We were talking about the test knit and how excited we were. And um, hers is beautiful, by the way. She's doing a monochrome blue, um, different shades of blue with white bobbles. And after I saw her 
cast on before I started mine, I kind of reconsidered the rainbow idea because the monochrome looks so good. Um, but anyway, so she and I were talking and this woman who had already left the store, I passed her when I was walking in and she walked up to us again, like slinked up and she was like, I'm sorry, if this is weird, are you Aro? And I was like, yes, I am. So uh, this person, she watched one of, she watched my first video and then have has kept up with it. And she doesn't have Instagram, so I can't tag her on anything. But like, I didn't even catch her name and I'm so sorry I didn't catch her name, I'm horrible with names. But like, please know that like, I was so excited to meet someone who wanted to meet me. Like, I, the entire time I was like, can I ask for a picture? Is that weird if I ask her for a picture? Would she want a picture with me? Is that weird? And then finally she asked for a picture and I was like, oh, thank God, I want one too. So that was really nice. Anyway. It was just like a really great moment for me because you guys know that I was like, maybe one day someone well, someone might recognize me at a yarn event and I got recognized at a yarn store, which is like super amazing and I felt really great. Sorry, I geeked out about that for a while. Um, yes. So that's what I got. <laughs> that was a long story about McKinney Knittery. But they're a really great store. Also, um, my favorite pie shop on the planet, Emporium Pies, has a storefront in downtown McKinney. So what I normally do is I will go to the yarn shop, browse around, pick up my yarn, and go walk less than a block to Emporium Pies, Emporium Pies, and just have one of their amazing delicious pies. And my favorites there, if you're wondering, um, they are the, the chest pie, chest pie, um, the buttermilk pie, and um, their apple pie is amazing. Oh, and their drunken nut. That's like a bourbon pecan pie. And that makes me very happy to live in America that I can get that pie. Like, sorry. But the pie place was closed when I went. So it was kind of heartbreaking. But I can get it like delivered to me. It just costs $90 a pie or something like that. So anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about a pie. While I was also visiting my dad, I realized I needed very specific shorties and the only place I could get them was a local yarn store and we were already planning on going to Tulsa. Um, so I made a stop at Loops in Tulsa and I treated myself to this. This was a spur of the moment buy, but this is um, an Australian yarn. I've been told it's an Australian yarn. It doesn't say on the label, but um, obviously the label says dyed by hand yarns. And this is actually 50% merino, 50% silk. And I've told you guys that I'm trying to branch out with fibers lately, um, especially plant-based ones. Um, I just want to do something a little bit different, especially during the summer, because it is really hot out and it's kind of staggering that this might be the coldest summer of my the rest of my life. But yeah, so I'm really excited about this. I bought this thinking that I would make the Jill Karina Summer Flirt tea that's currently in testing. I have um, tested it for Jill a lot, but I didn't sign up for this one because I just, I have so much on my plate. And she saw, I shared in my stories, I didn't tag her and I was like, oh, I wish I signed up for this. Cause she posted a, another picture about it and it's so beautiful. It's a, a lace yoke tea, by the way, in case you guys want to take a look at it. But and again, I'll link everybody, every maker, every dyer that I mention. Um, and I posted about it in my stories, I didn't tag her. And she sent me an email from, you know, my past knits with uh, my past test knits with her she knew my email so she sent a copy of the pattern and she's saying hey Aro, i saw that you wish you were on my test knit so like absolutely no pressure you don't have to be in the test but if you want to knit it like here you are and that was like the nicest thing i actually kind of teared up a little bit because like that's so nice and jill and i you know we go back years that i've been test knitting her patterns and i love her design so it was just it was amazing that she saw that I wanted to do it and she sent it to me like, also, it's it's a gorgeous pattern. I'm so excited for the release. Um, I really wanna work it up. Like right now, I wanna cast on right now, especially because I haven't worked with 50, 50 Merino Silk before, but I'm really excited with the sheen. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, Loops has an online shop, by the way. So if you want this yarn, um, this color is Apricot, apricot Nectar. Um, from Dyed by Hand Yarns and it's on their website, Loops. Yeah, so thank you to Jill for that pattern. I'm definitely gonna work it up. I don't know when exactly, I wanna cast on soon, 
but things are in the works for me that um, might push out certain deadlines. I can't talk about it yet until everything's finalized, but it's really exciting. Okay, uh, another cast on I have scheduled for this week is, um, so I am in the Anjali Dival, Divan, Anjali Divan, I'm gonna link her Instagram profile, but she started her summer bloom test knit and that's a color work yoke in worsted weight. And she does a tee, but I don't want a tee in worsted weight. I'm, I'd just rather do an autumn inspired one. Plus the design itself, it kind of looks like hops. So I thought it looked kind of autumnal. So I'm going to use um, this colorway. This is Stress Knits Yarn Worsted Weight in the colorway Dahlia. And I'm going to hold it with, um, this is fingering weight. I'm gonna hold it double. It's already skeined up because it was just a one cake wonder that I had. But um, this is the Playful Day Yarns uh, Viola colorway that I showed you guys last time for my yarn swap. And I think it'll go really well with the Dahlia. I'm very excited about it. Um, and I want to take a moment to talk about Stress Knits. So if you guys don't follow her, Stacey Elstone of Stress Knits Yarn, um, you should. She has a YouTube channel and a Patreon as well. And I really want to encourage you guys. I, I have a Ko-Fi Ko account if you guys want to donate to me. But instead of donating to me this month, I would much rather you guys join Stacey Elstone's Patreon because Stacy had a pretty disastrous flood in her home. She lives in Detroit or right outside of Detroit, I think. But um, if you don't know, they got hit with like crazy floods and she had like sewage water backed up to her basement, like all the way to the ground level almost. And all of her dyes, all of her dye material, um, equipment, yarn, undyed yarn was like wiped out. There was a GoFundMe that did reach their goal, but you know, she just found out that insurance isn't going to cover certain things, like a lot of things. There's like, it's a lot. She's going through a lot. And I really, I love her yarn so much. Like, I really have so much of it and I adore her work. You guys have seen her work. I've shown you a lot. Um, please support Stacy while she's trying to get back on her feet. Um, I think it's really important that we don't lose this dyer to something that was totally outside of her control. So if you can donate to Stacey Elstone on her Patreon, please do so. I'm going to link her, link her YouTube profile as well. So um, mad love to Stacey, please. Okay. So those are the cast-ons that I have scheduled for this week. And now I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk about my whips. So I definitely should have worked more on my whips while I was gone, but I was working a lot and cooking a lot. Like seriously, six hours on my feet in the kitchen constantly. It was a lot. Um, but this is the Petal Party crop. I've shown you guys this before. And what's, it's really aggravating because it's actually a lot longer than it looks. It's just the way that the, this is set, you know, the optical illusion is that it's very short. I only need um, three more inches on the body before I bind off. Um, so I'm planning on doing that tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow I will finish the body and the sleeve is really just, you pick up stitches along there and just do a few rows of ribbing. And so that'll take me like, not even, I don't know. I can't, I can't calculate. I can do it all in one day. I'm doing it tomorrow, I'll finish it, and then I'll get a lovely finished object photo because Samantha Guerin Designs, you know, who released this pattern, Petal Party Crop, this past week, she's a, she's a wonderful designer and I consider her a good friend and it would be awesome if you guys supported her because I really do, I love this pattern and I'm very excited to wear it out. So I should have done that, but I didn't. Then the other one, I'm working on, I, I should clarify, last time I said this is a design I'm working on, I, I misspoke. I meant this is a test knit design I'm working on. You guys know I, I do this all in one take and sometimes my mouth slips and forgets words. So this is Blueberry Pie. Blueberry Pie is by Joanna Coonan. Um, her Instagram handle is Soft Power Knits, but you guys don't need to know that because I'll link it. But Blueberry Pie, um, it incorporates bobbles throughout, I told you guys, and you can see more of the moss stitch texture that happens. So it alternates between stockinette in the bobble portion and then, you know, reverse stockinette and then the moss stitch. So I really love the textural element of it. It The Camellia Fiber yarn does a wonderful job of letting the textures really pop. So I'm very excited about it. And I feel like I haven't done a cable 
pattern in such a long time. So it's really kind of nice to, to stretch that part of my brain again. And I do love the way this yoke is working up and I can't wait to show you guys more. I am definitely behind on this test knit, but I'm hoping I'm gonna catch up this week. Um, with the long weekend, I'm gonna kick myself into high gear and focus on trying to catch up. But I really do love this design, it's gorgeous. And I think the pink really is um, almost skin tone. So another candidate for the uh, Threadbare Craft Along by Shelly Can. The other whip that I have going, so this one is a lot faster, Tutti Fruity. If you guys remember, I got this on sale from The Wandering Flock and I'm really excited about the way this is working up. The color is even more gorgeous than I could have imagined. This is the Fernwood Raglan by Alicia Plummer. And at the bottom, so the Fernwood, she has released a tank, a Fernwood tank. She has released a Fernwood drop, which is like a drop shoulder Fernwood. So it's gonna have that same lace element at the bottom, um, but this one is a Raglan instead of a drop shoulder or tank. And you guys know I'm a sucker for easy construction and I love a good Raglan. I love a good Raglan. So um, I'm really excited. I love the way the color looks and I think it's gonna be really, really cute when it's done. And of course, because it's in worsted weight and on, what am I using, US 8s? Yeah, US 8s. I think I'm gonna be done very quickly and hopefully I'll be able to show you guys that soon. <coughs> and I guess I should talk about my bits and bobbles sweater. Um, I can't stand up weird. Okay, yeah, um, I posted a finished object photo of it on Instagram. I'll probably post more. Um, just because I'm obsessed with this sweater. It's probably one of my favorite knits ever because it just makes me happy. Like you can't not be happy when you look at these little baubles and colors. Like, yeah, uh, you guys know I ripped out surgery for the neckline and I am 10,000% happier because um, where the neckline was before but with the folded rib, it was really right here. And I am like a cat. I can't stand anything tight around my neck, like whatsoever. So I knew when I was wearing it, I was like, this is gonna bother me all the time. Even if I blocked aggressively, it would just skew this portion. It just wasn't gonna look right. So I did surgery. Um, the way I do that, there are lots of videos on YouTube if you wanna learn how to do it. Um, what I did was I just, I picked up along a certain row and you have to be careful when you're picking up to make sure it's on the same row. Each, you know, each stitch is on the same row. Um, then I put in a, a lifeline around the stitches, like a, a, a piece of waste yarn essentially uh, through the same stitches just to make sure it was there as an anchor. Um, and then I just, I cut it off. I cut the other part off. I did it a couple rows above where I picked up just um, for safety reasons. And now it's secure and it's super comfortable and I'm really happy that I made that decision. Um, if you do the bits and bobbles, the neckline, it won't be annoying if you don't mind tight stuff around your neck, but I, I seriously, I'm like a cat. It's been like that since I was a kid. I can't even do any kind of turtleneck, cowl neck, none of it. So yeah, for me, it, this makes sense um, and I'm really happy with it. And the Bits and Bobble sweater in general, I'm just, I'm over the moon about like these sleeves, these sleeves, how cute are they? Just, yeah. Um, so I'm super happy to be home with my yarn stash. And the problem with my yarn stash is that I'm out of room on my shelves and I just got a ton of yarn in because it is my birthday month. Uh, July, it, July 31st is my birthday. And ever since I was a kid, I always had the mentality of, oh, it's my birthday month. And my birthday is on the last day of the birthday month. That means for the entire month, it is my birthday. Um, so if you dyers see me in your orders, that's what's going on. I am treating myself. And a lot of the, I bought a lot. Let's just say that. So um, these most these are all pre-orders. Most of these are pre-orders. So really quickly, this is Hawari Bazaar. She has her label here. She doesn't do wraparound labels. I kind of like that because she doesn't waste paper. Not that I love wraparound labels. I think they're beautiful, but sometimes they get lost and it's like, okay, I, I bought like five of one color. I don't need all of these same ones. 
it's just a personal preference thing. I don't mind that she does this. In fact, I think it's helpful. But anyway, this is a Den Moonlight Denetsu. I don't speak Japanese, so I'm pro I apologize if I mispronounced that or put the emphasis on the wrong thing. But um, this was a Sailor Moon colorway that she, because she has a Sailor Moon um, mystery yarn subscription. And she, when she opened up pre orders, like special order, she was like, you can request a color just DM me. And I was like sliding into her DMs. Can I request that special Sailor Moon color where you did? Because I've been obsessed. Um, and the reason I don't sign up for like mystery boxes and mystery clubs and whatever is because like most of them don't have the option where you can get as many skeins as you want for a full garment. And it's, it's really hard for me to commit to ordering a full sweater quantity when I haven't seen the color. Because I can see an inspiration photo, but if you don't see the full color, you know, it's really hard to gauge um, what you'll like or not. But this colorway, like, oh, guys, it's it's everything I love. And also it's Sailor Moon. So like, I just, ah, yeah. And she released her, uh, she uh, posted a picture of uh, this last month's June's colorway. And immediately I was like, so can I request that too? Because it's gorgeous, guys. If you're not following Hawari Bazaar Co, like you really should, especially if you like my pastel aesthetic, because she really nails them. Um, I'm just, I'm so happy with it. I'm not even, I don't even want to put it in the shelves for a while. I kind of just want to look at it every day, but um, that's that. Then I got this and I left this in the box because I wanted to show you guys how cute this box is. Obviously you can see it's from House of a La Mode. You could see her logo still. It's, I know the tape is cut, but I wanted to show you the box because the way this is wrapped, it looks like, like a fancy gift. And that's kind of what it is. It's a fancy gift I'm treating myself to. Da -da -da -da! Yeah, so this is um, Ito, Ito Kinu Kasuri. So Ito Kinu is with silk. It's 100% silk, and this is a special line that they're doing for um, like variegated colorways. They normally just do a solid for Itokinu, but this colorway is number 135, which is the pastel, and it pretty much is that Sailor Moon colorway, but in silk, and I'm planning on holding this with pink mohair to kind of like even out the color changes and make them more consistent, but like I love it so much, and it's so cute. It's so cute, you guys. Oh, I'm so excited. And when I saw it in like this fancy ass little box, I was like, wow, that's just, I'm going to leave it like that because y'all need to see it like this. Isn't it just precious? I'm really excited, you guys. Okay, so now I need to talk about what I spoiled a little bit in my Instagram stories before recording. I have received my Into the Wild Explorer Knits pre-order. Um, if you guys weren't following me then, I ordered a lot. It's been two, three months, I wanna say. I don't even remember when these things happen. Everything is a blur, but I, yes. So the reason I knew I was gonna buy something from the Explorer Knits um, pre-order was this candle. I love wax and oils. I talk about it a lot. Oh, it's so good. And she has an exclusive color, uh, scent way? What do you call that? Exclusive scent with wax and wool um, for just for this collection. And it smells truly incredible. It's like, it's got notes of vanilla and musk and something woodsy, but it's not like pine. You know what I mean? It smells like being outdoors, but sometimes outdoorsy candles smell just overwhelmingly of pine. And this is, oh, it's so good, you guys, it's so good. So I'm glad I got it. And of course, I also couldn't just get candles, I had to get yarn as well, because you know me. Um, first, not surprising, I got a pink. Allie of Explore Knits, she's not a very pink person. So this is like a dusty, almost terracotta pink. Uh, it's called Untamed and it's on super, uh, it's on cashmere canvas, which is her 80% merino, 10% nylon, 10% cashmere base. 
and I got it because it's the most similar to um, my favorite base, which is uh, 7525, but most dyers can't get it these days, and I don't think Allie ever does 7525. So um, this is what I got, and I have three skeins, so obviously sweater quantity for me, my size, and I really love, I love this color. It really is gorgeous. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna make with it, but because it's a solid color and it's versatile, I think I'm just happy to have it in my stash. Yeah. So that's that color, Untamed. Very excited to have it. And the next color is a Variegated. I got doo -doo -doo -doo, Lone Wolf. So Lone Wolf, this is on the same base. It's on the Cashmere base, but it's her Variegated and it's, it's slightly gray, slightly white in places. And it really just, it's so beautiful. I'm really excited about this colorway. I think I'll actually hold it with white um, just to kind of, you know, wash it out a little bit more and make it more pale than, than some of the darker bits, but that's just my personal preference. But I am really so happy with how gorgeous these colors are. Allie did an incredible job and it was worth the wait. This was worth the wait. Then my last colorway from Allie, I have five skeins of DK from her in Karma Chameleon. Karma Chameleon. And this was like my absolute favorite colorway from the collection. As soon as she posted it, I knew I needed to have it. So I, this, everything revolved around getting this and the candles. Um, and I'm really happy I got it. I'm actually planning on holding it with some kind of pink or reddish mohair to bring out the more warm tones because there's a lot of blue in here and I'm not a cool tone person. So I'm going to um, highlight the red pink parts and I'm really happy with it. Um, yeah, the pre-order was worth the wait. It really was. Um, I know some people don't like waiting for pre-orders and that's fine. I respect that. Sometimes you just need a little instant gratification, but for some dyers, especially dyers who are hard to come by, like it was absolutely 10,000% worth the wait. Um, but yeah, that was my Explorer and it's uh, haul as well as all my others. Oh, last thing I need to show you. How could I forget? I'm so dumb. Um, I got the Summer Solstice bag and set from Ritual Dyes and it comes with, for those of you who don't know, it came with a copy of the Outline Tea. There's an electronic um, code for the, you know, an electronic version of the pattern as well so I can get updates if there are erratas or anything. And I'm really excited about it because I love this pattern by Jessie May. Y'all know I love her design. And it comes with some adorable stickers. Doo, doo, doo. This is holographic too, so that's extra cool. And um, of course, this beautiful pouch. Like, I'm obsessed with this. Like, the peaches, it's so cute. It's stinking adorable. And of course, the pouch is big enough to fit four skeins of yarn. So I'll only take out two because I can't handle that many skeins of yarn in my hands. Um, but this is on her Undine base, Ritual Dyes Undine base, and it's fingering weight, uh, 60, 40, cotton and linen. So pure plant fibers. And again, I'm trying to branch out, trying to, you know, do some new things with fibers when it's so hot out. And I'm really excited about this colorway. It's a little more orange than I expected, but that's totally fine. I, I think I can still rock this. I don't know. What do you guys think? Obviously the lip color, the lip color changes it. But I think I can do this, especially with a coral lip color. I think it'll look nice. Um, but I'm really excited about this little pouch because it's stinking adorable. And that definitely is all my recent acquisitions. I'm waiting on a couple more because again, once it hit July 1st, I was like, we're hitting this. Um, and then it was check out, check out, check out. Anyway, I'm so glad to be back, you guys. Uh, please let me know what you guys want to see from me next week. Um, if it's just an update about my tests that are in progress, that you know, I'll do that always anyway. But if there's anything particular, and um, please let me know what you're working on. You can always feel free to tag me and things on Instagram. I do. I'm on Instagram every day, so I will see it. And again, 
I'm so excited to be back. I'm sorry I was gone and I didn't tell you guys. I just didn't know like how much of my personal life should I share. Anyway, so happy to be back. And uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, uh, comment if you are so inclined. And thank you. And I will see you next week. Bye.